Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another live music lesson here. Um, I'm going to be teaching Mauro Giuliani's uh, Opus 60 number, or Opus 50 number six, rather, um, on like Friday or next Tuesday or something. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I did an analysis of it so that you guys, when it's time for you to learn it, you kind of have an understanding of it. So if you've ever had the questions, um, you know, how do I tell which chords are being played here when, when we see a lot of scales and stuff going on? Uh, what's A, B form? Um, why am I using harmonic minor and melodic minor? Uh, how do I modulate with common tone? Um, what's a parallel major and minor? This is going to be a great video for you to watch because I'm going to answer those questions. And we're going to do it with an actual piece of music. I'm not just going to sit here and play the scales for you. I'm going to show you an actual piece of music. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of this. My dojo members seem to really, really, really like the analysis portion of all of this. Go ahead and say hi when you get in, guys. Um, and, you know, I, I like to keep my dojo members happy. So um, we're going to go ahead and do more of that. If you want to join my dojo, it starts at $2 a month. You can check the link below. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to bring the sheet music up here on the screen. Again, I'm going to do an actual classical guitar lesson on this. This is an analysis, so watching my hands is not so important. Um, but I will kind of keep the camera in a position where you can more or less see my hands. Um, so we're going to take a look at this first, um, this first phrase here in a second, but there's just a couple things that I want to point out. Um, first off, Good morning. Good morning, everybody. First off, we're in 6-8 here, so this is going to be counted in triplets. Um, we're also in the key of A minor to start, which has no um, accidental. So at A minor, our first note is A, our second note is B, third note is C, fourth note is D, fifth note is E, sixth note is F, and seventh note is G. Good morning, NG, George, Araki. Good morning, guys. Okay, so... <clears throat> That's our scale, and those are our scale degrees. Um, one thing real quick, too, is in 6-8, we're counting in triplets. Um, I had a guy come to my channel the other day and call me a charlatan because I told people to count triplets one and uh, two. And uh, and that's actually a correct way to count triplets. If you count it one triplet, two triplet, that's good, too. Um, I think one and uh, two and is better. Um, if anybody ever tells you that uh, there's only one way to count triplets, uh, don't listen to them anymore. Straight up. Okay. Um, good morning, Bev. So we're going to be starting in the key of A minor here. Um, I'm going to go through and explain you know, where these accidentals are coming from, where's the G sharp and the F sharp coming from, and all of that here in a second. But it helps to hear this first phrase that we have on the screen. So we have... It's a, it's a piece with, with some pretty quick um, scales in it, right? So let's talk about the first measure. Um, we have what's called a pickup, and that's our and, uh, and then we have some notes. And the first notes that are important to look at here are the bass notes. So we here have A. Of course, A is our first scale degree, right? And if we think, okay, well, how do we, how do we actually tell... Um, what's our first chord? Well, you take your first scale degree, our A, that's the root of the chord, and we're going to take every other note till we have three. So if we skip B, that gives us C, and if we skip D, that gives us E. So we have A, C, E as our first chord, the A minor chord. And you'll see we actually have A, C, E outlined here. Now I have these nice little grace notes um, to add a little flavor here, and then these are what are called passing tones, right? So the E is our chord tone. D is passing to C, which is a chord tone. This is a neighbor note, that grace note. We're not going to worry about those too much today. Then we're back to C, passing tone B to A. And then we run into our G sharp here. And we're going to find out where that comes from. But first, we need to understand what bass note we're using. So this bass note, E, is actually the five of the key. We've got five here. Now, <clears throat> If we take our 5 and take every other note from the root, that's going to give us a chord. Now we have E, 
skip F to G, skip A to B. So E, G, B. But however, we have E, G sharp, B, if you see. Now, that comes from what's called the harmonic minor scale. Now, what is the deal with harmonic minor? Well, harmonic minor adds a little extra um, dissonance to your home note, right? So if I were to play the A minor scale, I'd go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now, yeah, that sounds just fine, but there's not a lot of pull from that G to A. So what if I make that G sharp? Let's take a listen what happens. Now that last note really pulled us home. So that G sharp is actually there to create tension back to our A. Remember the whole point of music is that you're going to give people things they're comfortable with, like your roots. You're going to take those things away and give it back to them. And the G sharp is something that makes people want that A even more. So we have E, G sharp, and B, which is our five chord. So this is one, five, and then where's this F sharp coming from? Well, this F sharp's coming from the melodic minor scale. And I, I hear a lot of people say that it's a pointless scale and that this is, this is why they're wrong. Um, so the melodic minor, that F sharp, is just gonna add a smoother sound if we're doing a scale passing up to the G sharp going to add a smoother sound. So this this harmonic minor we have E F G, right? And that's a I mean it's a cool sound, but it's it's very uh very moody and it has a very very kind of arabic sound, right? And and maybe that's not exactly what he's going for. So what he wants is something a little smoother. So we sharp the F as well and we just get kind of a smoother voice all all the way up to that G sharp. And after we hit that G sharp, we're gonna get our A's at an octave. So that's actually the, the tension that's built up being resolved into our home note, right? So we have E's and these cool um, little grace notes. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna, we're gonna be getting the melodic and harmonic minor to add tension to pull us back to the A. But we don't want to just use harmonic minor because it's just not a smooth enough voice leading into our A. So if we go to the next um, phrase, let me move us over here. We have basically a repeat of, of what's going on in the first phrase, but the ending is slightly different. So I want to talk about this here. Um, the ending. And let me pull over our scale so that you guys can have the scale degrees on the screen. I think that's very helpful to be able to see the scale degrees. So <clears throat> as you can see, we begin to kind of repeat our phrase here. So we have the same thing as the beginning leading all the way up to this right here. And this is important because it adds the concept of a seven chord into what we're doing. So the seven chord is our five seven, right? So here's our root. So we have five, five, one, five, one, right? One, five, one is just, that's bread and butter for musicians. Now, instead of using the E and the G sharp, we have this descending scale and the important note is this D. So a seven chord, if you guys recall, is when we have the root every other note from the root, and then we're also gonna add an extra one, which is the seventh. So here's E, one, F, two, G, three, A, four, B, five, C, six, and D, seven of the E. So we have E, we're gonna use G sharp from harmonic minor, even though he's kind of left that out here, B, and then D as our seventh. And a five, seven is gonna create even more tension leading into our one. So with the five seven, we can imagine we've already heard this G sharp. If we pair this G sharp with this D, you're gonna get a sound that really wants to move back to one, right? And that's what it does. At the end, we get this one arpeggiation. So this phrase, we have right. So that's that's a arpeggiation of the one, right? So our one is A, 
C, E. And as you can see, we have A, A, E, C, A. So we're all getting to the one here. Next, we have a really handy thing um, to know, which is our common tone modulation here. So this is also going to introduce the idea of A, B form too. So let's just take one of those ideas at a time. Let me move my circle out of the way here. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the chat. I do my best to answer them at the end of the lesson. So <clears throat> we're going into the B section of this piece. So A, B section, we're, we're going to have the beginning, which is our A section, and then the B section is meant to contrast that. And then we're going to go back to the A section or a variation of the A section. Right? It's a very common form for classical music. Now, in this case, our B section is in what's called the relative major. Oftentimes you're going to have the relative major or the five of what you were doing so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be unheard of to see a B section for this type of piece in E major. Um, but in this case we're doing it in C. In C. So C is our relative major to A minor. And what that means is they share key signatures. Now for a short amount of time our C is now the one. Right? And to prove it, we actually are going to take, let's take every other note from the C, C, E, G, right? So we have C, E, G here, C major, that's our one. And then we go here, so we have a B, F, D, and G. This is actually a G7 chord. This is our 5-7 in what's called an inversion. So this is in first inversion. So a G7 is G, B, D, F, and we have G, B, D, F. However, B is the lowest sounding note here. And we go back to our one chord, C and E, that D's passing on to C, and we get our four of C. So if we go C's one, D's two, E's three, F is four. And if we take every other note from F, we have F, A, C, right? And so here we have F, A, and this E is actually what's called a a passing tone, right? So it's kind of the same deal. Um, and you actually may be able to say it's more appropriate in a pagiatura, which means you're jumping up and you're coming back down, right? You're jumping up, coming back down. So we're jumping to a, a note that does not belong to the chord, coming back down to land on this C. And we're going to talk about this in just a moment. This is another important concept to understand when you're going through a piece. Um, but I want you to understand, first and foremost, we have one, one, five, seven in first inversion, five, seven in first inversion, one, four, and then we actually get G, C, E, G. This is our one chord again, but the G is in the bass. This is in second inversion, right? So our one chord for this section is C, E, G, and this is C, E, E, G. G's in the bass. That's what's called a cadential 6-4. So anytime you're in second inversion, which means the, this note's in the bass, so we have C, E, G, that note is in the bass, that's second inversion, you have a certain interval structure over that bass note, which includes a sixth and a fourth. So here's your fourth, right, and here's your sixth. Now that may not take into account intervals, guys, just a heads up or sorry, octaves, right? So this C is a fourth plus an octave, but we're still just going to call it a fourth, right? And then what happens is we keep this G bass note. So by having that cadential 6-4, what we get is an actual, like, if you listen, that sounds like, it sounds kind of like the home chord, but it also wants to move to the five and then move back to the home chord, right? So what we have here is we have our C chord, and then our 5-7 chord, and back to C, 4, cadential 6-4. And then on the next phrase, so each of these sections are, are really kind of two phrases. So on the next phrase, we're going to get more or less the same progression um, minus the 4. Uh, and it's it's going to move back into our A section. So we're going to close off 
the B section, the C major section, um, and move into our A section. So real quick, uh, let me move this dot out of the way and let's grab our scale. Don't want to be without the scale. Da, 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 da. Here's our scale. All right, so what we're doing here um, is we're, we're having another phrase and it follows a lot of the same patterns. So here's our one C, E, G, C, E, and G, right? C, E, G, our five and first inversion, again, back to our one, back to our five, back to our one. So it's one, five, one, five. And they actually also did that at the beginning in A minor, right? So the, the original key of this piece is A minor, and he had the same kind of chord progression going there. And if we listen to this, what we get, is just really a, a variation. And then we're going back to a variation of the A section, thus ABA form, right? So at the beginning, we had A minor, and here we're back to A minor again, right? So this is a, you know, a basically a verbatim repeat. We have... from there so we won't go through those chords again guys because we've already we did that at the beginning it's just a it's a verbatim repeat the only thing that's different on this second time through the a section is this one note this b it's, that was a c last time but that's the one note um, and then we go into somewhat of a coda and we're going to talk about that in a second um, but so we go back through here da, da, da. Coda, coda is your all. You're gonna have a lot of one fives a lot of the times in your coda. So let's just take a look at the coda, and then we'll wrap up the, today's lesson. Um, again, this is an analysis. I'm gonna walk you through how to play this piece probably on Friday. Okay, so we have our one chord, A C E, our five chord, E G sharp and B. He just left the G sharp out of this one. Sometimes composers are going to leave notes out, right? Then one again, and this is the five seven that we saw. Uh, before two because of that D, right? Then we go back to one here with this bass note A, 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 and here's a passing tone or neighbor tone. So A, G sharp, A, that's a neighbor tone, arpeggiating A minor again here. And then he does the same exact thing, um, but an octave lower. So he does it an octave lower here, A, G sharp, A, right? And then an arpeggiation of A minor, A, E, C, and then our open A. Now here we have our 5-7 chord, E, G sharp, B, D, and then back to 1. So it's just 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 7, 1, basically, right? And it, it's, it's meant to, to sound kind of just as a conclusion to the piece. Um, there's nothing really super special going on here. He has, you know, our 1, 1. That's 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 a pretty um, standard kind of coda. So we have and then All right, so I'm gonna run you guys how to through how to play this step by step, um, but not today. Uh, I want to kind of take care of one um, one subject at a time. Good morning, Subin, good morning. Um, this is a something that's been requested by my dojo members, more analysis. Now this analysis answers, you know, what's a cadential 6-4? Let's take a look at our first kind of coda. Um, let, let's, you know, take a look at AB form, melodic minor over harmonic minor over natural minor. So it should have answered a couple questions for you guys. Uh, by all means, if you're interested in joining the dojo so you can get an extra two live streams a week, the three are free for public, and I'm going to keep those free forever. 
Um, but the extra two are for my dojo members only. That starts at two bucks a month. And also, um, I have my next book coming out soon. Let me grab it here. I'm working on the video. There's gonna be a two and a half hour video um, or a two hour video, however long it turns out. There's gonna be a hundred examples on how to count rhythm. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that because I'm looking forward to putting it out. Um, it doesn't look like we have too many questions this morning. Uh, so good job following along, everybody. I am going to go ahead and hit the dog park and then get to practicing myself.